Okay, going back. I'm going to boot up the uh, AS Rock again with the uh, two hard drives in it, but now I'm going to boot it to the uh, my SD card with uh, easy to boot on it. And I went ahead and set it up. It's at a bad angle, but at least I won't be shaking so much. Uh, I've already, that's the phone that's on the tripod, so I can just set it up like that. Figured that even though it's a bad angle, you can't really read what I, I have to always show and tell anyway, so you can't really read it. So, so let's just get, get comfortable here. Let's see. You can see the whole thing. I can tell that. Just uh, can't. Uh, I'm going to try to fish my water out of here and get a drink. Got it over here behind the tripod. Uh, Dripping water all over my shirt. I just can't get. I was outside there for an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. You know, I don't know what time it is. Oh, four, five, six, seven. I guess I was out there. I must have been out there around three hours. Boy, it takes me forever to do everything. I'm tired and kind of shaky now. So, anyway, um, Linux. Let's see. Yeah, Linux. What, I, what I'll do is. I know Party Magic booted the last time, so that's what I want. Now, that, that's got good apps. Yeah, I ran it on this machine, so. Oh, well, I could have done 64 bit, but it doesn't matter. 32 or 64? Might have to do 64. I don't know. We'll see. 32 bit or 64 bit. Let's see if that'll even work. I think either one will run on this machine. I know it's si it's a 64-bit processor, and it'll run 64-bit operating systems. But uh, let boot up, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I should have stopped this recording while it boots up. Well, the last time it didn't take too long. Part of Magic can take quite a while to boot up because it's loading everything into RAM. But uh, this is a, you know, dual core AMD with two gig of RAM. That's plenty fast for some part of Magic. Uh, it's fine for Fedora 23 or Windows 7 or whatever. But you can, you can bog it down when you start using uh, Flash and all that uh, Flash and stuff on the, uh, you know, in the web browsers. And Chrome will slow it down real bad. Firefox will do better. Firefox does uses less resources than Chrome by quite a bit. Chrome has got some weird memory leaks or something in it. On my other machine, it's a quad core. I've seen it use. I've got four gig of RAM, and I've seen it get up to three and a half gig of RAM and lock the system up. Okay, so I'm here. Um, let's see. What I want to look at is disk health. So that's the perfect app for what I want to do. Maxter, oh, one's a Seagate and one's a Maxter. So the Maxter, I believe, is the one I just put in there. Um, Max Plus, 30, yeah, 30.75 gigabytes. Smart is, is on. Past overall health. It's actually in pretty good shape. It's a pretty old drive, too. Yeah, it doesn't even actually have any error. Just it, it says you only most most of my drives have got some sort of problems. That's pretty good. Okay, let's see what this one. I think this one's got problems. And it's one of the reasons why I put Windows 7 on it was because it's getting old. This is a Seagate Barracuda, 250 gigabytes. It's newer than the other one, I believe, and. Uh, just keeps pre. It's been saying for years. It's been doing this for years. But pre failure, pre failure, continuously. You know, throwing. Uh, and the reason I put Windows 7 on it or Windows on it, I can. Uh, I can set defrag to automatically run every so often. And uh, I don't know. I had originally thought that. Uh, 
you know, with the Linux, you know, like EXT3 and 4, uh, was back, back before EXT4 was EXT3, I thought it wasn't working as well with not using the bad sectors. But, uh, turned out that the power supply went bad in that machine. Uh, and so that was my real problem all along. I had about two, two or three hard drives in it at all times, and, uh, power supply was just limping along in it for a long time, and I didn't know it, and it finally went out. But it was doing crazy things. It, it'll do crazy things. They'll still run, but they'll, it, what it did is it would, uh, it made it seem like the hard drive was, I mean, it, it is, in, and when you test it, it says it's in pre-failure mode, but it would, uh, it would, uh, not, not see the hard drive sometimes, and wouldn't boot to it, and then after, uh, and I think twice, or three, actually, I think three times, I quit using it as in my regular machine, uh, this, the machine that this hard drive used to be in, uh, but, uh, while I was still, uh, I'd still, I'd reformat it. it. Three times it uh, destroyed the file system. And, you know, beyond trying to save it. And this was a Linux, a Fedora Linux. I think I tried a couple of different distros. I even tried uh, after, uh, what's that new, I can't think of the name of it. There's a new fi uh, file system that Linux, actually Fedora started me use, BTR, BTRFS. I uh, tried that out, and it didn't make any difference. So, um, I've had it in, um, anyway, I finally decided, well, if I could run defrag and, and often enough to keep just telling it, uh, don't use those bad sectors and everything, uh, then maybe it would, uh, I could get some more use out of it, but, and on a system that I don't care if it crashes, I didn't care if it lost the data, I don't keep any important data on it, and, and so that was at least a year ago, and it hasn't ever crashed, uh, only problem I had now is it got some viruses. So there's a storage device. What's that? Okay, there's nothing there to show. It can't even show output. Let's see if I can see what it is. It's going to be my uh, mass storage device, 32 gigabyte. Yeah, that's my SD card that I'm running off of. And this says unknown model. That might be my DVD drive that's in there. <coughs> okay, so. We seem to be all right, and uh, let's look at our partitions. Actually, I can go ahead and format that, uh, or just I'm not going to format it. I'm going to delete. I'm just going to make it empty. The uh, 30 gigabyte hard drive, the ID hard drive that I'm going to. I went ahead. I keep going back and forth. I decided yesterday or this last night. Yeah, I'm going to put. Let me see what I'm looking at. Okay, yeah, no. 28.64 gigabytes, 19.4 uh, use and 8 free. Yeah, that's it. And that's dev SDA1. Okay, so yeah, it was trying to boot to that and it couldn't because it uh, was set up as a USB, uh, on the USB adapter. So its files are all looking for each other through the USB, not through the IDE interface. So, uh, in the NTFS, SDB1, which used to be my C drive for Windows, is now going to just end up being a backup drive. I'll just leave it NTFS because I can't delete, I don't, all my phone videos are on there. SDC is my 32 gigabyte SD, that's my DVD, my card that I'm running off of right now in the USB adapter. So, make sure I'm getting on the right one. I didn't, I didn't get on the one I thought. Well, you want to make sure you know what you're doing here. Okay, so this uh, 28 point, yeah, it's FAT32, but I'm going to, well, no matter what I do, I, I, I believe I'm, I want to have a 64, uh, yeah, this is a 64 uh, bit Windows Pro license, and I want one. Of those, that's why I need to look on my laptop and see. I think it's a 32-bit license because uh, I want one that's a 64-bit Windows, so that I can. There's actually one um, video editing, uh, video editing application of proprietary. It used to be, well, it's still a big, big. It's a professional, and they made a free version. Professional, I can't remember the name of it. They've actually got two of them that have done that now. I tried one of them, and it, it didn't. It, I didn't like it. 
there's a big learning curve and it wouldn't even work with all the normal uh, video formats that you know uh, codecs that I use for you know that everybody uses for you know YouTube and everything and the other one I wanted to try it out and see if it did uh, so anyway um, that's really the only reason why I care I really prefer using Linux but it is good to have it uh, I want to have one I don't want I don't need three Windows 7 systems just paying the buck to keep them working and clean the viruses out of them and all that crap so I'll have one Windows 7 one XP on my, my uh, old laptop. Actually, I guess I'll have two. A virtual machine XP that I'm running in my quad core machine now, and then my old Dell 600 laptop. I may leave the uh, one XP on it, maybe. But it's right now it's one XP and, and Debian Linux. But um, yeah, I'll probably leave it like that. So anyway, I put Debian Linux on there, and, and uh, I already had a. A, a remix of Fedora called Corora on there, but it got old. It was like Corora 17, so I put the new Debian 8 on it because that's uh, 1.6 gigahertz. With I got two gig of RAM in it, but uh, it's single core, so you can't. Debian is a lot less uh, on the re, uh, resource usage, so it runs pretty good like that. But I haven't really used it yet or set it up, and put anything extra on it. So anyway, I can make this empty, but uh, and then uh, when it's empty it's easier to you can let the windows install put make it NTFS and make whatever partitions it needs to make uh, or if I do Fedora then same thing uh, it's easier to do it if there's nothing on there it's e easier to get through the install process so make sure I'm on the right one okay but you don't want to do it while, um, while it's mounted so um, Okay, so it's not mounted. It says, if it says mount on, then it's not mounted. So all I gotta do then is uh, delete, unallocated, and it still has its, uh, it still has its um, partition table though. And you could write a new partition table, but uh, this is in good shape, so I'm not gonna do that. If I thought it was infected, I would to get make sure there's no viruses on. This drive has been fine with no problems. So, yep, want to do it. So there it is, pretty quickly. And this is called G Parted that I'm using. This is my favorite partitioning app, and it's in. Uh, it, it, you can put it on almost any Linux distro. Uh, you can install it. I s install it on all my distros, but this is actually part of Magic. Uh, a distro just for backing up and partitioning and checking hard drives and all that stuff. It used to be a completely free um, distro, but I guess he wasn't getting enough donations, so he's charging for it now. But this version works well. It's 2013 version. Um, has my NTFS. It's got 19.3 gigabyte unused, and I, and I can delete all my Windows files and get another about that, about 20 gigabyte back. I'm not going to do a check on it or anything. I was thinking about it, and then this is, of course, my what I'm running off of. Okay, so that's how quick and easy it is to do that. Now it's ready to install a new operating system. There's a virus scanner in this new this version of Part of Magic, which I could use. But uh, when you click on it, it says no definitions were found because of the large size. These are not included. And you could, uh, would you like to download them and say no? Because I'm not going to do that now. What I'll do maybe, this is a Clam AV, so what I'll do is after I install, uh, well, if I install Linux, I can use Clam AV. If I install Windows, then I'll put a VAS on there. Of course, the first thing I click scanned it with was a VAS, which was on, on that system. But uh, Part of Magic has a lot of tools. Um, I think you can still go. You can go to the Part of Magic website. They don't show it available to download, but I think you can still find it. I already had it. You know, when they, they I'd already downloaded it while they still had it on their website. But uh, a lot of backup tools. A lot of uh, file recovery tools, um, Ghost for Linux, which is like 
works a lot like uh, Ghost, uh, Backup App, uh, Disk Cloning. I like Clonezilla. That's the one I use. It, uh, and uh, Race Disk and um, the Lilo setup. That's another boot manager. Part Clone, Parted Magic Services. I don't know what that is. He parted. I was just using Photo Rec. I'll get back images and stuff like that. I'm trying to think of the other one. Some file managers. Te uh, test disk, I believe it's called. I don't see it. Clam TK, that's the, uh, oh, that's the GUI. Uh, I tried it out there yesterday. That's the GUI. Oh, I tried it out in here. And then I went and tried it out again in another system. But anyway, that's the, another another GUI for uh, Clam AD. Another graphic user. Yeah, test disk. That's a it's a it's a uh, command line, but it, it has wizards, you know, and numbers to put to put in and stuff. You don't have to write out the commands. It's a real good. It can bring back lost partitions. This is the best one I've ever used. Uh, so uh, true crypt if you want to encrypt your disk and uh, UDP cast disk cloning. Another way to clone disks. That's the one I haven't ever used. I don't think it used to be on here. So. I'm going to quit jabbering on and shut this down. It's working. It's quiet. Um, no errors on the drive. So as long as it, you know, after it gets warmed up, if it gives trouble, that's the only problem I might have up there. I put the lid on it to make sure that my big old splices wouldn't get in the way. They're right close to where the door goes. And that was all good. So um, I'm ready to stick this back up in the rack. And uh, tomorrow I can... Uh, started installing so I'm glad I went in and did that today let's see log out turn off computer so the easy to boot work just fine with uh, part of magic there's no no alterations or anything but some of them you're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to learn how to rename the the uh, rename the uh, how you're supposed to rename the uh, ISO files. Now there it is laying on its side still. And uh, take the old USB. There's my trusty little. That thing has turned out to be really handy. The, the adapter came with uh, the strontium. I started to show the cases, but they're inside that white box, wherever it is there. And I've got stuff on top of it. But. Uh, Strontium 64 gigabyte SD card, but that's a different brand 32 gigabyte that I put in there. So uh, you may have seen these before. That's just a, you know, it's not bad looking, but it, you know, those e machines are cheap machines and uh, cheap made. And uh, so they're not. Uh, it came with Vista on it, but it had a Windows 7 upgrade, and so uh, that's the license that I use, and the CD, the DVD that I used to put 7 on it with. So, uh, anyway, I will um, get out of here now, and be back with some other stuff later. Bye.